What's good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we have some brand new WWE action figure reveals for us at WrestleMania 38 Access. Now, it says Access. It looks like it was a big event. I didn't see anybody wearing masks. I thought for sure that they didn't do it this year. I heard a bunch of stuff saying that there wasn't anything this year. Apparently, that was wrong. Apparently, that was not the case, and I'm very happy that that wasn't the case. I'm very glad there was an event. I'm glad that that was in person. They had the booth set up. I'm imagining next year, we, of course, will get San Diego Comic-Con. Not this year unfortunately that event takes a lot of time to prepare but hopefully next year we'll be in person i'm gonna try and go next year so that'll be really fun as well but anyways that has nothing to do with today we have wrestlemania 38 accesses event where we showed off a ton of new wwe action figure and mattel products for us man and it was a great day it was a great day they showed off some pretty damn good figures today man i was really excited for it we're gonna dive into all the details breaking down everything that we saw i'm gonna give you guys all the insights so with that being said man let's go ahead and start off things first with the ultimate edition Roman Reigns figure. Now, we know that this was in the works for a while now, right? We talked about it a few times. It was leaked out to us a few times. We talked about it for, a, I don't want to, I want to say like six months now we've known about this figure, at least on the channel, like leaking the news and, you know, the little inside deals that we get into. But Roman Reigns taking a look at it here. I'm kind of disappointed with it. I'm going to get into all the details, of course, here and break it all down. Hopefully, he'll come with a Universal Championship, but I do love the Bloodline shirt. I like that the gauntlet is not only in the red, guys, but if you, if you pay attention to the fist, it's actually sculpted. You guys know that usually they just paint on the, the gauntlet on his hand. They actually went out of their way to sculpt on the details onto the, the glove there. So the glove's actually sculpted. Not just the gauntlet back part on the wrist. They actually got the whole nux, the you know the hand, all that stuff there. So it's a lot more details. I do love the screaming expression where he's looking up and his hair's falling back. I think that's excellent for photography and pick fetting and stuff like that. You guys know he's the MDT champion, so I love it. I think he looks great. I, I do like the figure a lot. My only critiques are going to be, of course, that the shoulder tattoo is not complete there. That bothers me so much. I cannot stand that massive gap that we're seeing here on the Ultimate Edition right there, man. That cannot happen, okay? That That is just a deal breaker for me. I don't know what I'm going to do there. I may fill it in with paint, a decal. I got to do something. That gap right there is just way too much of an eyesore for me. It needs to be all one fluent decal there connecting all of his tattoos because that big gap there just throws it off because Roman Reigns doesn't have a gap there, right? Roman Reigns has a beautiful tattoo tattoo wrapping all the way around with his tribal tat and it needs to be filled in. I also hate that they gave us the same head sculpt that we've seen so many times before, man. That's the same facial expression that we got so long ago with his elite figures. The same interchangeable head sculpt. I was expecting a better beard, like a longer, thicker beard with the nice fade and the nice taper on the side and all the good stuff. And it's just not, it's lacking a lot of details, man. I think they could have given us a lot more here with the Ultimate Edition Roman, so I am kind of disappointed in it. I still think it'll be a cool figure and stuff like that. I love the red gauntlet with the sculpt on it. I love that we're getting the necklace and the Bloodline shirt. Just lacking some stuff that really would have put this figure over the top for me, but I do still enjoy the figure. Now, moving on, guys, we actually had a little bit of inside look at the Mattel Creations crowdfunding project that we put our money in last fall, I think, or last summer it was. And you guys remember it was the New Generation Arena. We had Diesel, we had Doink, we had Macho Man. We got to see a lot of those details here, and it looks great, man. I think they did a really great job with it. I'm enjoying all the things we're seeing here. You got to see Diesel, you got to see Macho Macho. You got to see, you know, Doink the Clown. I think the Diesel figure looks really strong. It looks a lot better than I was expecting it to. I really like the head sculpt that we got here. Macho Man with his accessories and cloth goods. We got to see Macho with the jacket. We got to see, you know, Doink the Clown. You got to see the ring and like the, all the different things that we're going to be getting with this guy. So I think that's really awesome. I think they did a really cool job here getting all these things in. I don't think we got any like really super close-up images of Macho Man, but I like the way that he's looking here. And you'll also be shocked to know that we we are getting another Macho Man. So we're getting two different Macho Man here. I thought they were two different images of the same Macho Man, but they're actually two different Macho Men. At least I think they are. Yeah, I think this Macho Man that you're seeing here in the black and white with the Madness shirt and the tongue sticking out, I think that's actually going to be a Target exclusive Macho Man with the two different shirts and the black and white details. And then you have your new generation arena Macho Man on the commentary set with the tables and the ring and all that different stuff. So you are going to get different versions there. I think that's really cool that we're getting a another Macho Man. I actually like this Macho Man. I think better than the other one, in my opinion. I like that we're getting that going. Did we need another Macho? That makes the third Ultimate Edition Macho now. Did we need that? I don't know, but the figure still looks good. I like the fringe coming off of it. I think it could be a better selected one. You know, it is a Target exclusive. I think it's the it's going to be the Ultimate Edition that follows the Batista, but at the same time, I still like the way that it looks and everything like that. Not my favorite Ultimate Edition, but I do understand it. It reminds me a lot of the Retro Macho Man. You know, that same kind of look that we had going on. It's your NWO 
Macho Man. Now transitioning from the new generation set and all those Ultimate Editions, man, we're gonna transfer into the sickest thing I've ever effing seen, man. Look at this Raw is War authentic scale stage that we saw right here, man. Look at how beautiful this is. I even, I even got to see a video going around on social media that had like holes in it that blew up blue smoke and red smoke. And you guys can see the different Attitude Era figures on there. It's, it's got the Attitude Era flags on the side with the WWE logo. It's got the War is War Titan Tron with the entrance way and the ramp. What what a beautiful piece, man. Now, there's a lot of things to consider with this thing. I don't know if this is going to be the next, like, crowdfunding project. I don't know if this is going to just be a display piece like we saw at Comic-Con, like, what, four or five years ago, remember, with the nice big SmackDown stage, and they were like, do you guys want to see this? And we never heard another damn thing about it. I don't know if this is one of those deals or if it's actually something that could come to fruition, but if this is the next crowdfunder, you can absolutely sign me up. I'm probably going to buy 10 of them, and I think it looks great. It's freaking beautiful. Can you imagine the creativity level that you can have? Not only for displays and stuff, man, but you you have, like, the sky's the limit if you were to get this thing into a PicVet arena, add to it, add your own logos, add your own custom curtains and things of that nature with your scaffolding. Lots of fun things that you can do here. So we'll have to see what the future holds for that. Haven't heard any news. By the end of this video, we may have more updates and news on what we could see as the next crowdfunder. I was hoping to see an update on not only the first crowdfunder, but our next project moving forward. Maybe that'll come at Comic-Con, but... Hopefully, uh, you know, we'll, we'll know about things more often. But this Raw's War stage is freaking insane. It's absolutely beautiful. I love the way it looks. Had to talk about that one right off the cuff. Now, from there, man, we actually did get some brand new Elite figure reveals. Now, a lot of these we already knew about, but we did get some that I didn't even know about. So that was really cool. But we have broke some of this news here on the channel. But starting out first, man, we do have Elite Series 94. And we have Wes Lee and Nash Carter from MSK. These figures look fantastic, man. Now, one thing you will notice is they do have rubber jackets. So I Got to key the Matt Cardona clip. Like, oh my God, that goddamn fucking old school Mattel stuck in that pose jacket. Gonna... But to be honest with you, it's not as bad, right? Because they, they, they at least the sleeves are hacked off, right? At least the sleeves are hacked off. These figures are going to be super poseable. I can tell by the way that they're molded. I can tell by the parts choices. Now, I think on, on Wes Lee, I feel like they could have definitely chose a better torso. I don't know why they chose the damn Fandango John Morrison torso, man. That guy, like, don't get me wrong, he's ripped. But why not use the freaking Ricochet mold, man? The Ricochet torso is perfect for this guy. Even the Finn Balor torso would have looked good. I don't know. I, I just feel like this one's a bit too jacked. This is like bodybuilder cutting body fat percentage all over the place. I feel like they could have done a little bit better there on the parts choices, but these figures look fantastic. I love the parts choices with the shorts. I love that they went with their like DX Xbox slash kind of gear, you know, with the lime green, black, and white. That's the gear that I figured they would give them, but you know, you never really know with Mattel. I love these figures. I think the heads are great. I think they're going to be very poseable, so that's all fantastic. We also had a look at Mace. Now, you guys know I'm not a big Mace guy. I don't really care for it, but we've seen this figure a few times now. We also saw British Bulldog. I feel like we saw this beforehand. I'm not in entirely sure. I think we saw one photo of it. It's looking pretty solid. It reminds me a lot of the Elite 38 Bulldog. A little bit different here, but it is, uh, it, it looks the same. Like, it's very, very similar. Little change in decals here and there. Same head sculpt as before. No true effects technology. We also had a look at Elite 94 Brett. Now, one thing you'll notice is Elite Series 94 is going to be Edge, Brett Hart. I think, I want to say uh, British Bulldog is the collector's edition, if I'm not mistaken, but it's Brett Hart, Mace, MSK, Edge, and Stephanie McMahon. Man, I think, and then I think British Bulldog is the collector's edition, but this Bret Hart, the hairline's pushed all the way back. We kind of already discussed that before, but I like the gear and attire they went with. You know, it's going to have updated, you know, stuff going on with it, but the continuation of the head sculpts, I do like that we're getting another Black Icy title. Bret Hart, they just struggle with, man. What For whatever reason, I don't know why that is the case, but that just seems to be the way it is for Bret Hart. Moving on up, we do have Elite Series 95, and this is pretty cool. We got to see Big E. We did announce a news video leaking this line not too long ago, so it does seem that our, our insider knowledge was come true here with Big E being featured in the line. I like this gear. I think this is a really good looking Big E. The only thing I'm not really feeling is the head sculpt. You know, I'd like to see a newer head sculpt after the last couple Big E's have had this head sculpt. So now this is going to be our third or fourth Big E with this head. That's kind of annoying. But WWE Championship do like the gear a lot there. We also have Eddie Guerrero making his return to the Elite line here. And this may be his first main Elite line figure. We had the Legends figure. We had the other Legends figure. I think this is his first 
first ever main elite line, if I'm not mistaken. You had the Hall of Champions version. You had the Hall of Fame version. You had even the four-pack Hall of Fame version. I think this is the first ever in the main elite line. I could be wrong, but you have more of a Los Guerreros look. One thing that you're probably going to notice immediately is not only do you get the Tag Team Championship, but you get a head sculpt that looks a little bit odd to me. I'm not the biggest fan of this head sculpt. I think it favors Eddie Guerrero, but I think his Legends head sculpt from last time was a lot better. I do, however, really love the formula. I think the figure looks nice. I love that he is the Chase variant, so we do get the, the not only Los Guerreros type gear, but you also get your black gear with your SmackDown Tag Team Championship. I love Eddie Guerrero. Any Eddie Guerrero is fine with me. I still don't know how we don't have an Ultimate Edition of him yet, but he still looks really good. I think he would have been a great Legends Ultimate Edition to throw in there. However, we did get the Macho Man. Next up in the, in the set, guys, we do have Bobby Lashley, which we did know about. This is so identical to his last Elite, which is kind of annoying. It looks pretty much the exact same. Same accessories, same head sculpt, same everything from head to toe here with the Elite 95 Lashley. Would have loved to seen his red pants or his white pants, but they did choose a gear that I like. I do like the black and white Bobby Lashley gear, but I would have liked to seen the white pants or the red pants. And he could have been the chase, I guess, but they did give it to Eddie Guerrero, which I am happy about, but I would have loved to have seen those red pants or white pants for Bobby. Uh, it's still a solid figure. I do love this gear that he wore. It's just very, very similar to his Hurt Business gear that we just got with the black and gold. So that is kind of annoying there. We also had a look at Shotzi Blackheart. This is an amazing figure. Holy crap. This figure looks insane. I love the head sculpt, the helmet, all the tattoos, the gear. This figure looks super poseable. This may be women's figure of the year, man. This, this looks really, really good. I think it looks just like her. I think that they did a fantastic job on her head to toe here. Love the gear. Love the tattoos represented. This is the epitome of of women's figures here for Shotzi Blackheart. And the last figure in Elite 95 that we have right here, now I'm pretty sure that in Elite Series 95, it's Big E, Eddie Guerrero, Bobby Lashley, Shotzi Blackheart, John Cena, and Jimmy Uso. So they didn't have Jimmy on show here. They did have him at that event though at Walmart not too long ago because we just discussed it, right, with the Elite 94 Edge and white gear. Then we had, you know, Jimmy or Jay, you know, the, the meme's been going around there with him in the black gear. They actually had him on display. They don't have him on display here. He was supposed to be in Elite Series 95, so I'm guessing that's the case. But John Cena rounds off our set with a brand new head sculpt with his, you know, his green and yellow gear with the hat. Great looking shorts. You know, this is the same torso, same shorts, same, you know, knee pads, shoes, all the different stuff that we have seen from John Cena from a, for a very long time now. But it's so good. I like this head sculpt a lot. I think the hat looks good. I like the way the armbands look. Hopefully he does come with his shirt to complete the full gear so I don't have to get a custom made or anything. But I really would have liked to seen his SummerSlam gear with the 16 time champ like Mario inspired gear for this figure. That would have been really cool, but that is not the case here. So we do have the green and yellow. I imagine that he'll probably be in Elite Series 100, but we'll have to see about that. More on that coming soon. But John Cena's head sculpt does look good on here. You guys know I'm a big John Cena guy, so I like the figure a lot. The next figure is Brock Lesnar, and I love this figure, man. This is fan-freaking-tastic. You have your updated man bun Lesnar with beard. He's smiling. He's got his beautiful torso and tattoos. He's got his jeans on. I'm guessing this is going to come with a flannel, a black shirt, gonna look sick. I love this figure. I can't wait to see what all accessories he's coming with. I'm guessing that him and Becky Lynch that you're seeing as well will probably both be Elite Series 96 if I had to guess. I could be wrong about that. That's just me throwing things out there. But I think that Brock and Becky will be Elite Series 96. I think they both look good, though. I love the way Brock looks. He looks fantastic. Going to be a great figure to obtain. And then you do have Becky Lynch in her WandaVision slash, uh, you know, Scarlet Witch sort of gear here with her. Uh, it's sort of a prototype of it. You got, you know, your red gear going down. You got her red boots and the crazy looking knee pads and stuff. So I'm guessing this will be her Scarlet Witch gear in the all red. Should be a really good looking figure. Not sure why the head sculpt is prototyped. I'm pretty sure that's just the Elite 72 Becky head, if I'm not mistaken. It looks just like it if it's not, but it does look like the Elite 72 Becky Lynch head sculpt on that. So that is one thing to see there. But there are some main Elite line figures that we saw. Again, any information on these, I'll, I'll definitely put it up to you guys soon. But that is not the end of the Elites. We had a lot more Elite shown off to us, so we're going to dive into that right now. We have our SummerSlam Elite line, man. I think this is a Walmart exclusive. I could be wrong, but this is our SummerSlam Elite line. Build a figure, Kid Dominic Mysterio. And starting off first, we do have Sensational Sherry in her 
white gear. This is a really cool figure, man. Like, all this stuff is sculpted, I'm pretty sure. This is not cloth. This is all sculpted onto the figure. So the sleeves and the torsos. You do have those weird skin pegs on the inside there. So hopefully we can, like, just blotch some pe white paint in there to cover that up. But really cool figure, man. You get some really wacky molds going on with this guy. So you get, like, some really cool stuff sculpted on there. They did a great job with details and stuff on this. Uh, all the tooling and stuff for Sensational Sherry looks really good. I like this figure a lot. It probably, it might shelf warm, but it's still a damn looking good figure, man. Not only do we have Sensational Sherry, but we have a figure that I've been waiting on Mattel to make for years. It is SummerSlam 2004, Randy Orton in his creamsicle orange trunks with the World Heavyweight Championship. The night that he was 24 years old, he won the World Heavyweight title from Chris Benoit. Made me cry. Here it is in the, in the flesh here, in the plastic, doing the pose. You know, we, we've seen this in basic form. I honestly think they did a better job on the basic. It may look better in person, but these trunks are looking really orange, man. Those trunks weren't supposed to be that orange. They're supposed to be kind of like a cream sickle color. So it is kind of hard to capture, but I think the basic figure that they made a long time ago in the Heritage line did look a lot better than this, but it could just be the lighting and stuff because I'm, I'm really enjoying the figure regardless. This is definitely a pickup for me. Randy Orton is looking fantastic, so uh, I like this figure a lot. Not a ton going on with it, you know, compared to his other figures we've seen of the Legend Killer style, you know, Randy Orton from his early years. Still a beautiful figure and one that I have to grab. Speaking of which, we have a 2005 SummerSlam Shawn Michaels from his match with Hulk Hogan and holy hell, Brad. The black and white gear. It does have the basic 100 head, but you get the entrance gear. Another long pants Shawn Michaels. I mean, we have to give Mattel their props for finally doing some long pants Shawns that we've been waiting so long on. So now only, not only do we have a ruthless aggression you know, line from Walmart featuring Shawn Michaels in long pants that uh, of a gear that we really wanted. We now have two different ones with the SummerSlam Elite line here with the Build-A-Figure Dominic. So we got the SummerSlam long pants, uh, a figure I've been wanting forever. Beautiful looking figure. Love the way it looks. And it's going to look beautiful up on the HBK shelf up next to our Ruthless Aggression line, Shawn Michaels HBK, that we'll see in just a few moments. But rounding up this line and completing our Dominic Mysterio is going to be Rey Mysterio. And oh my Jesus, man. This Rey Mysterio Elite, first of all, looks insane. But the Dominic Mysterio figure is crazy, man. He's got his Hawaiian style shirt going or his like button down shirt and the white. He got his jeans. Tons of articulation on those jeans. Looks like he has double jointed arms. He's got the undershirt. He's got his nice white bleached hair. A little bit more blonde. You know, it probably could have been like a touch more platinum looking. But it still looks sick. I love this Rey Mysterio in the blue. I love the, uh, I don't like that head sculpt. We've seen that head sculpt for years and years. Really wish they would have given us a different young, you know, Rey Mysterio. But I love the gear in the blue. I love all the stuff we've got going on. And it comes with the contract in the briefcase on the ground. So that is so sick, man. Holy crap. What a cool looking figure, man. So they, they were killing it with the elites, man. And this is not the only Rey Mysterio that we saw today so you guys can look forward to that but not only do we have the SummerSlam Elite line here with Ray and Sean and Randy and Sensational Sherry we also have a look at some upcoming ringside exclusives and that was going to be none other than Cameron Grimes man we have a Trevor Lee figure finally coming right here he's got his money he's got all his different stuff going on man this is so cool I think this is such a great looking figure they did a fantastic job on it only thing I'm not really liking is going to be the head sculpt I'm really not looking I, I really don't see Cameron Grimes in this head sculpt, but I do like that they got the hairy chest. I like the accessories he comes with. He's got his money flaunt. He's got his top hat. He's got his cool formula. He's got his knee pads and everything. Million Dollar Championship. Really cool, man. I, I like it. I just do not like the head sculpt that much. So, another NXT talent that they're getting as a ringside exclusive. I think that works out for me. I don't hate it. I think it's cool that we're actually getting somebody that's worth getting, and it's not just another, you know, repaint of a thing. It's actually a new character, so that's really cool to see him finally get a figure. I know a lot of people have been wanting a Trevor Lee slash Cameron Grimes for a long time, so that's really cool there with the money and the accessories. After Cameron Grimes, man, we did have a look at the Ruthless Aggression Wave. Now, this is kind of shocking to me because the figures changed. Remember the other day when we talked about the figures to come in the Ruthless Aggression line? Those apparently changed, so we're going to get into that, but look at this packaging for the Ruthless Aggression Walmart Exclusive Elite Wave, man. Shawn Michaels with the classic WWE logo, the best of Ruthless Aggression with the Shawn Michaels figure. He's got his ring bell accessory. I love this set, and this was kind of my deal breaker on whether I was going to collect this set mock, and now I feel like I must collect this set mock. It's it's just gorgeous, man. What a great looking box. I think I, I was hoping and clinging that they would use the classic WWE logo, and they did. They used the Scratch logo, which is just sick as hell. This Sean looks great. I love the packaging, but 
in this wave, man, it is not going to be who we thought it was. You guys know that Series 1 is Shawn Michaels, Batista, and Brock Lesnar. Well, Series 2, we thought, was going to be Booker T, Triple H, and Rey Mysterio, but it turned out to be a different superstar, man. It turned out to be Booker T, Rey Mysterio, and Rob Van Dam. So Rob Van Dam sneaks into the Elite line here for the Ruthless Aggression Wave. Didn't see that one coming, but these figures look insane. We have a new Booker T Elite. He's in his NWO gear. I figured this is probably what was going to happen. I was hoping it would be in his red trunks, but it is in his NWO gear, which is still cool. I like it. I think it looks great. Again, I don't know where my WrestleMania build, or yeah, my WrestleMania Elite went. Yeah, I, I don't know what the hell happened there, but my white gear Booker T went missing, so I'm definitely going to have to be grabbing this one. We have Rey Mysterio in his white gear. This is such a beautiful figure. You're probably wondering why he's missing a lot of his tattoos, because he didn't have all those chest and stomach tattoos at the moment of this figure, but the white pants look insane. I'm glad that they went with this style formula instead of the first ever Rey Mysterio formula they went with in the Elite Series 1. So this Rey looks great with the white elbow pads, the white gloves, the white pants, the white mask. Sick AF Rey Mysterio right here. Kind of plain Jane, but at the same time, it's a great looking gear and it's going to be very poseable. So that is very worth it for me. And then Rob Van Dam in his green and gray and black here with the RVD. You got the same head sculpt. You do get the Intercontinental Championship, but any RVD is fine with me. I don't really care what gear they go with. You can't really go wrong with an RVD figure. So I love this figure. I think it looks great. Uh, the whole wave. I think both sets, Series 1 and 2 of the Ruthless Aggression wave looks sick. Hopefully, there's more Ruthless Aggression Elites to come. I think there's plenty more figures they can make. Do not stop at Two Waves, Mattel. Keep us coming, please. Just give... Like, you got the Legends line at Target. Please keep this Ruthless Aggression Wave coming. I mean, I will buy out every Walmart if you just keep it alive. Just keep it alive. Keep putting out those figures, and I will grab them. But speaking of the Legends line, we did have some brand new Legends reveals to us. And it is going to be none other than Molly Holly. Now, I am not up to date on what the, uh, the the Legends wave were on. I want to say we're at like 15 or 16 somewhere in there. But Molly Holly looks insane, man. You get two different versions, so she is the chase. And I love this like continuum that we're on with the chase variants where they're almost like uh, Jazzwares and AEW, man. They're kind of two completely different figures. You know, you're getting some, like some decos the same, but you're getting new paint, a new head sculpt, accessories that really complete the look and make you feel like you're getting two completely different figures. So Molly Holly, you have Molly Holly and then you also have your Mighty Molly so you get Mighty Molly and you have Mo Molly Holly two different versions to go with our Legends Hurricane she has her cape her black and pink is sick AF you do get her whole complete look so that is cool AF man I love that they got that so not only do we finally have a Molly Holly elite figure to go with our Stacy Keebler slash you know like different versions of her that we're getting that's just so cool to finally get superstars that we thought we'd never see in Mattel elite form to finally get them and not only we're we getting them but we're getting fantastic versions of them that we might have not seen back in the day. Like, really dumbed down versions. These are, like, the best versions that we could possibly get. So you get lots of articulation and stuff. We also have Rey Mysterio in this wave again. Great looking Rey Mysterio right here, man. I love that he is coming with his hooded jacket. I love these, the trunks, and I love the tights that he gets. You guys know that this formula that they use for Rey is super poseable. Don't really care for the head sculpt on this Rey that they're using here, but I still like the mask. I like the attire overall. I think that the jacket is sick AF. I bet you you can put that on a few different people. It looks to be a bit baggy on Ray, so maybe we can put that on some other guys, but it looks crazy good as well. And we also have Bradshaw and Farouk, man. We have Acolyte Elites in the Legends Wave. Did not think I'd ever see it. I feel like this has been on my wish list for about 20 years, man. We have been waiting on Acolyte figures so long. So Farouk looks insane. Bradshaw looks insane. I like their head sculpts. I like that their their formulas are good. I, I love them. I think they look really, really good. I don't have any issues with these. The Farouk torso that they use for him and his shirtless figures, could they use, you know, the, the shirtless or the Stone Cold Steve Austin torso? Maybe, but I don't really hate it. I still think it looks awesome. I think Farouk and Bradshaw finally getting into our shelves and displays is awesome. So that works for me. Now we have our APA and our Acolytes to go up on the shelf. Now, outside of that, man, we also had these random Elites here. Now, I don't know if this is top picks or what's going on with these Elites right here, but we have another Rey Mysterio Elite, and it's in his classic Batman gear. So, so what it looks like they've done here is they've given us that Rey Mysterio with the shirtless mold, and then they've given him the double-jointed arms, and they've just kind of painted over that torso to give him, like, that bodysuit look. But it's got the Rey Mysterio logos and the armbands and the mask. I love this head sculpt that they got on here. That's that basic head sculpt that we loved way long ago. The blue mask with the blue 
blue with the black mohawk with the different yellows really clean looking ray right here you guys know that ray mysterio's figures are super postable again i told you there were a lot of rays today this is our fourth ray mysterio elite that we saw today outside of that so this is a great looking ray outside of that we have a 2008 era john cena from WrestleMania 25. Now, this is weird to me because this is a re-release or an updated better version of the Elite Series 3 John Cena figure. So, I don't know exactly what this was entailing. I don't know if this is top picks. I don't know if this is another wave down the line. I don't know if, what this is really because not only did we get John Cena, but we also saw Randy Orton. So, I don't know if this is teasing. I, I'd hope not. I'd hope not, but I, I saw a few people commenting, is this Elite Series 100? So, you'd have Rey Mysterio and the Batman Get, like, I feel like Elite Series 100 is way too far away, so I don't think that would be the case. But you had a lot of people commenting on it, so I did want to put my two cents there. I don't think this is Elite 100. Wouldn't make any sense. But it has to be some sort of top picks wave or something to have John Cena, Randy Orton, and Rey Mysterio all three together here. So you have three random figures. I love the John Cena, though, the updates. It is the same damn shoe mold that we've seen for years and the same shorts, but at least he has double-jointed arms. He does have the sculpted armbands. He has his hat, and he, he has his t-shirt. So it is a way better version than the Elite 3 that we saw so many years ago with its updates. But at the same time, I'd hope to God this wouldn't be Elite Series 100 or any preview of Elite Series 100. I feel like they have to go super duper over the top with that. But the Randy Orton also looks good. I love the head sculpt. I like the gear with the black and yellow and like the, you know, the different snakes on there. I'm all for Randy Orton and John Cena and Rey Mysterio figures, so that doesn't bother me, man. Three legends from my, you know, growing up wrestling, so... That's all cool with me. We also got to see, like, this tractor trailer play set with, like, a crane and a wrecking ball on it, which I thought was cool. But does that mean that there's going to be some wrecking ball, tractor trailer, diesel wrecking slammobile at WrestleMania or something coming up? You know they love to put that on TV. It looks like it's going to be a diesel truck with a crane and a wrecking ball. I think you could have plenty of fun with that. But that was a really cool action figure setup that they had going with all their different stuff. And the I wish they would release these backgrounds, man. Whoever's making these play sets with the double doors and, like, the parking lot and the different displays and locker rooms and stuff like this that these figures were shown on. Whoever that is, I need them to get in contact with me ASAP. But outside of that, we saw a lot of different repeat stuff. We did have some new basics and championship showdown two-packs that I'll get into, but I also wanted to show off some of the things we knew we were getting, but they finally displayed them. So we also got to see a look at the Trash Corbin basic that looks like Titan Tron Vince. I still think you could put a Vince McMahon head sculpt on this and it would look a lot better and make it look like a Attitude Era Vince. We have that Randy Orton basic. This head sculpt turned out to be pretty damn good. I'm still not a big fan of the figure. It's kind of look a bit awkward, but maybe it'll be something I, you know, if I see it at retail, I grab it. This Bianca Belair basic is pretty trash. I don't really care for the head sculpt, and it's very plain Jane. It looks like a statue of garbage, to be honest with you. We have a look at Candice LeRae, and she is the Chase variant in this set, but this figure is not as bad as the render image. I think that it, you know, it's actually a sizable basic, which is cool with me. We have another Rey Mysterio figure that has removable gauntlets, which is really cool. I could see somebody wanting to use these elbow pads or these gauntlets on a figure, and maybe even this mask, but that is a... I, I don't like the deco, but I still like, you know, some of the things going on with the Rey Mysterio. We have another Sheeta here, and not too much going on with it. Not my favorite gear. Very plain Jane. Not, not a big fan of this one. We have a Matt Riddle with the same head sculpt and, like, his red, white, and blue gear. Like the gear. Do not like the basic, to be honest with you. We have a really damn good... Like, I know you wouldn't hear this coming out of my face, but we have a we have a damn good looking Tamina basic right here. This is Tamina's best figure I've ever seen, man. This head sculpt's unbelievable. She gets not only the regular version, but the chase version. So this Tamina is the best Tamina they've ever made. This one kicks her other figure's face off. It has a better build to it. Its face looks just like Tamina. And so they did a really good job on this. I think that if I was Tamina, I'd be super proud of this figure. Not a Tamina fan whatsoever, but I know a lot of people have been wanting a Tamina for a long time. The women's figures collectors that, you know, mainly collect just the women's figures. Did a fantastic job on this Tamina. I think they're going to be excited about that. Next up is Natalia, and this is the same head sculpt that we've seen on her Elite 74. Not too much going on with this basic. I, this is a definite skip for me, but it is a good head sculpt if you missed out on her Elite. We have a Roman Reigns basic, which looks really weird. They put like his Elite 45 looking head sculpt. It's not the Elite 45 head sculpt, but they put like his hair piece from Elite 45 onto like a newer updated Roman. It's just a really odd head sculpt. It kind of looks like they took his new man bun head from the jogger pants basic 
and put it like a long hair head sculpt on it. It is cool to see that his gauntlets are molded on though, so that you know getting some detail into the basics is definitely worth it. But it looks like he has no neck or like this figure's short or something. My boy Cedric Alexander finally gets two new figures here, and it makes me sad because they typically give the chase variant to a guy that's not gonna get a figure for a long time, and so that's pretty saddening. They could easily fit him into Elite Series 96, 97, 98, 99 before they get to Elite 100. I would love to see an Elite Cedric. Because I like these basics, but it's the same head sculpt from 30 series ago. I like the knee pads. It's just, God, they just, God, I really wish these were elites. I really do wish these were elites. My boy needs a new figure. Love Cedric Alexander, so it's cool to at least see him get a figure here. We have Finn Balor in the blue. Same head sculpt as Elite 82. Really cool looking basic, actually, like as far as like the gear and like the colors and stuff, but still not something that I'd want to pick up. And then last but not least on basics outside of championship showdown packs, we have the 316 Austin here. And the t-shirt looks cool, but it's just, you know, I don't know, man. Just not my favorite basic. It's okay. Head sculpt's not atrocious. It is like a shrunk down version of the basic 100 slash the Royal Rumble Elite head as well. And then we also have some championship showdown packs. You have Omos with his white wrist tape against AJ Styles. AJ Styles has been rocking this same head skull for about 30 years now. Very skippable two-pack for me. And they're supposed to be tag team champs here in this battle pack, so I don't know why they'd be fighting. But the Omos figure is a different take than his regular basic in the basic line. So if you guys want it with white tape, a little bit different look there. Still happy to get an Omos basic. I'm actually looking forward to that. We have Bobby Lashley in the Miz. Very skippable here again. Not too much on the bone there for the, you know, same Bobby head, same Miz head, stuff like that. And then we have probably a two-pack that's worth getting if you're going to get one would be this Andre and Hogan two-pack. I think this is a damn looking good two-pack. I like the Andre the Giant head. I like the whole figure there. Kind of reminds me of that WrestleMania Heritage, you know, entrance style figures that we saw with him and Macho. Hulk Hogan looks good with his head and his different body there. I think this is the only basic right here that I think I would get. And you guys notice that Hulk Hogan actually got like a full basic. He's like, has the old basic articulation. So, you know, they always give Hulk Hogan that preferable treatment here in the Mattel WWE line. So we covered the basics. We covered the show down packs, we covered the elites, covered the exclusives. We did see some like different figures on display that we already knew we were getting, so I'm just gonna run through them real quick. You had the ringside exclusive NWO Hogan that we knew we were getting, it looks pretty good. It kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of plain Jane, but I still think it's worth the grab. You get some cool accessories here and there. I think it looks pretty good mock, so you do have that one. You also have some legends on display. You had the Stacy Keebler slash Miss Hancock figure. You had your X Pac out of his gear, so you got to see him on display. The Kane figure looks absolutely stunning. I think Lex Luger's figure looks good. You know, you're getting your two different versions there. We already knew that figure was coming, of course. We got to see the Legends exclusive or Target exclusive Ultimate Edition Batista figure, which I'm still super excited about. I imagine that one would be hitting very, very soon, of course. So Batista's looking damn good. You also had Edge with his red trench coat and the Chase variant in the white and gold gear and then in the red and white gear. So you get your two different Edge figures. I think both of those look outstanding, man. That red trench coat's worth it alone. You also had your mean Mark coming in here, your classic Undertaker. So he looks really damn good. You know, you get your way, way back version of the Undertaker before he was the Undertaker. You also had your little, like, Bendham stretchy figures there. You got Roman Reigns, Rey Mysterio, Undertaker, Damian Priest, Drew McIntyre, Kofi Kingston, Bobby Lashley, Big AJ Styles, Bianca Belair, and Brock Lesnar. So it seems like these figures are going to continue to come out. I guess they're doing pretty decent at retail. We had looks at Ultimate Edition Macho Man, or not Macho Man, I'm sorry. We had looks at Ultimate Edition Hulk Hogan and Mr. T coming soon. Got mock images of those guys, so those those are looking pretty good. I like the way both of those look. We had some different displays, you know, with all the different figures, you know, cycling through. I think these all looked really, really good on display. We also had some images of Shawn Michaels, you know, Goldberg, and Triple H from all their different Ultimate Editions that we're going to be getting, so I thought that was pretty interesting as well, how they were, you know, just out and about there. I forgot all about that Goldberg, man. That is one of those Ultimate Ultimate editions that I think it's Amazon exclusive, right? Like all three of those are Amazon exclusive, if I'm not mistaken. They may not be, but those are the or they're the fan takeover versions. I'm sorry. So I don't know. The Shawn Michaels is damn good. The Goldberg's kind of eh, I feel like it may shelf form if it gets to retail. And then the Triple H is really cool. I don't I, like I, I really like that. I owned that shirt as a kid, so that's pretty sick there. Of course, we've already seen these, but I did want to mention that they were on display. And then we also got to see some more superstars figures in the Undertaker Mankind. We got to see Shawn Michaels, Ted DiBiase with this cloth jacket. I thought those looked really, really good. I got a couple close-up images of those. I really love this line. I'm hoping to see those at retail very soon. I, I actually think I do want to collect some of these, so we'll have to see what comes with that. I don't know if I can do the old Kyle Peterson unpunched versions, but we'll see about that. And then we also got to see some new retros coming. So you got to see some different 
different retros here with the Hart Foundation. You got Jimmy Hart, you got Nikolai Volkov, you got Tugboat back there. So I'm guessing those will probably be the next retros that we get to see coming soon. That Bret Hart looks better than all his elites. Look at that. It's just jokes, but seriously though, I like these 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 bit, bits of retros right there. And outside of that, I think that pretty much wraps up everything that was shown. There was a lot of stuff showing, you know, lots of breaking down, lots of images to cover here, man. But I think that pretty much wrapped everything up. I think my favorite thing shown off was probably the uh, probably the RVD, the John Cena, the Brock was really sick. I love the SummerSlam Elite line. I love the new uh, Ruthless Aggression figures. I think the Legends line was really sick. I thought we got a lot of good stuff here. I'm really disappointed in the Ultimate Edition Roman Reigns, though. It's probably my biggest, uh, you know, oopsie or the biggest, like, the, the worst figure that we saw today or the biggest disappointing figure that we saw today for me was going to be the Roman Reigns figure. But at the end of the day, I still like all the different things that we saw here. Let me know down below what your favorite reveals were today, man. Let me know your, your thoughts all down in the comment section below on all these figures. I thought it was a pretty successful day. If we get any more news, I will definitely be putting it up. And I actually just received word that those uh, those elites of John Cena, Randy Orton, and Rey Mysterio, there was actually another Drew McIntyre, but I thought it was just a regular figure. Those are all just the top talents elites. So we're getting top talents, Drew McIntyre. I didn't even plug in the Drew McIntyre because it's literally the, the, the Elite 89 Drew that we just saw. So that Rey, that John Cena, and that Randy Orton are all top talent elite 2023 figures. So there is that. They're up for pre-order as we speak. So definitely go get in on that, man. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Don't cross the line. And we didn't see another Elite AJ Styles. We still haven't seen an Elite AJ Styles in forever, bro. Like in wrestling gear. Have not seen one of those. Don't cross the line. Let me tell with that, man. That's crossing the line, bro. They cross the line with that. You gotta you gotta make a new Elite AJ Styles. New head. Give me an ultimate edit. Give me something, man. Elite it, AJ Styles hasn't had a figure in years. Outside of that freaking boneyard match. You cross the line. I've been beaten, broken down inside. I've been calling the law with no